Hello, this is Ferris Khan, and uh, great news today. Uh, Doug DeMuro uh, got an antimatter blue Bronco. And uh, I just, this, this video is 40 minutes, almost 40 minutes long. Uh, I just thought I'd give a little bit of play-by-play -play commentary in case perhaps you want a quick preview of it and you don't have the 40 minutes, et cetera. Uh, one thing you can try to do is play it at one and a half speed or one in, at one point, uh, or maybe double speed or 1.75 speed. Uh, but Doug does talk very fast. Uh, there's a lot of material here. Um, I will just kind of talk about a couple different points. First of all, uh, on, on the video, and first of all, um, go ahead and see the video. I just want to make sure that, uh, that you knew that. Uh, Doug is uh, the best reviewer that's uh, on um, YouTube, so I, I highly recommend this. This is, this is uh, certainly complimentary of, uh, of Doug DeMiro. And, but I do want to kind of point out some areas where I might differ with him. I do have a two door versus the four door. So there's a little bit of difference there. Also, uh, I have a base base. So uh, the expectations of my $30,555 vehicle versus the one that Doug is reviewing are, um, it's different. You know, it, uh, the expectations when you're in the mid $50,000 range versus the low 30s, it's, it's, just, it's just different. So just wanted to point that out. Couple quick things, uh, you know. Doug has his uh, car auction business, so um, he promotes it. Go ahead and listen to it. But if but if if you uh, want to skip ahead, go to uh, one minute. I'm going to just go to one minute and um, twenty four seconds or so, twenty five seconds. He just kind of ends it right here. Let's go ahead and submit your car. So let's talk. So here's where it longer. sort of starts at 125. The Jeep Wrangler has existed without any really serious direct competition. There have been sort of competitors like the Toyota. Okay, so I mean, I'm not going to go too much into it. I don't want to steal Doug's uh, 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 thunder here. But basically, uh, his point is there is the Wrangler that has existed uh, for a while. Doors and roof have come off, etc. And now the Broncos there um, as direct competition, there isn't really any other direct competition. Uh, he goes on to talk about, I'll just kind of talk about the first few minutes. His signature thing is um, quirks and features. So he kind of goes into all the, uh, the little details. Um, he talks about the grab handle. He talks about um, uh, the rubberized buttons. Uh, you know, th these are really cool things when you kind of think about it, you know, the, the attention to detail that was uh, what was there. Um, he talks about the screws. I want to I want to skip ahead to about seven minutes. Uh, I think just around here. Let's go a couple seconds before just so you can kind of see. So let's just kind of see this together. Exposed screws throughout the interior, as you might expect for a muscular vehicle like this one. The hidden touch is that the screws actually say Bronco on them. When you get really close and look closely, you can see Bronco printed on the head of the screws, which is kind of cool. One other interesting. All right. So that's awesome that he mentioned it. I kind of wish, and it seems like maybe the, the, the vehicle that he got didn't have the toolkit. And I will show the toolkit in an upcoming video, but it would be it would have been really cool if he pulled out the toolkit and uh, kind of showed that as as well uh, uh, that it's compatible with the Bronco bolts or kind of how that works. A um, couple other things he did talk about the goat modes, uh, the configuration of the cluster. Though let's let's kind of uh, that front. Let's kind of go right to what I'm talking about. So the so. He didn't really go into or maybe didn't realize that there's a way to con configure this. So let's kind of listen to what he says, and then I'll give a little commentary On the here. left side of the screen, it shows like a top-down view of a Bronco with lines next to it and like a square in front of it. That is supposed to show like your adaptive cruise control. The square in front will show how close you are to the car in front, and the lines next to you will show if you're like drifting over I'm going to skip ahead a couple seconds. So it's, he's just basically talking about the... Uh, it's pretty much always in place. You have the ability to configure the little part of the go. gauge cluster screen over on the right. And as you can see, you can adjust it to show like your average speed, your trip mileage, your fuel economy, that sort of thing. But the speedometer, tachometer, and that little Bronco display always stay put. And you can't configure that in this center gauge screen, which is kind of strange. In fact, all right. 
Okay. okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just give you a little thought here. So um, so he talked about not being able to configure the right side of of you know behind the steering wheel that that uh, that screen. You can actually um, configure it. The, the left side you can't. The right side you can. And I don't think he noticed. There's a there's a feature there called My View, where you can change it from you know instant fuel economy or turbo boost. You know, there's a, a bunch of different things. Or he mentions that you can't even hear the radio station that you're listening to. You can. You you can you can configure it that way as well. Uh, I was a little surprised. You know, I'm sure Doug has had had to look through a lot of uh, different features, but a little bit surprised that he he didn't notice uh, that little piece there. All right. A uh, couple other things. I'm going to go skip ahead uh, to about 17 minutes in this video. And it was cool that he did try to take off the roof. Let's take a look at that right now. And uh, I also want to say that he's got the roof rack. I have the roof rack as well. One over the driver's seat, one over the passenger seat. And to take off one of the panels, you just sort of flip these little... Oh, got caught in the ad. <laughs> Okay. Let's get plastic, back here. like switch things. There are three of them. You just move each of them to like the open position. This is the molded in color top. Latch, like an actual physical latch. You pull on this plastic piece and that will release the latch. And then you can just lift the panel right off. Very simple, except this particular Bronco is equipped with roof rails, as you can see. And so getting the panel off with the roof rails in place is kind of annoying. There's not much space to actually do that. And it's a little bit difficult to remove the roof panel with the rails. And in fact, if you plan to own one of these and you plan to take the top off frequently, on, off, on, off, you probably won't want to order this with the roof rails. It just gets... Okay. What? So I'm going to just stop here for a second and just say, I disagree with this point. Um, I think Doug might have taken it uh, taken off the roof panels uh, once or twice. I've done it several times. It's not easy, just like you know, learning to drive a manual transmission is not easy. However, it's not that difficult if you know the technique. You've sort of learned how to do it, just like you push the clutch and you get get into the gear, et cetera. Um, for the roof, all you have to do is you do those three latches that he described. Then you, uh, uh, the three kind of sideways latches that he described, then you do the, the bigger latch, you open it, then you kind of lift it up a little bit and you close that, that latch. Then you just kind of push it backwards a little bit. And um, unlike Doug, he, he actually climbed on top to see what was going on. I, I never actually even did that. So once, once you have it kind of going backwards a little bit, you can slide it out sideways. So um, it does take a little bit of uh, practice. It can be done in a minute or two. It took me three or four times to figure it out. I'm guessing that Doug just hasn't done it <clears throat> as much. I would recommend actually getting the roof rack with those front panels um, because you have maximum flexibility. And it also actually makes you feel pretty secure in there. It's open air, but you've got those two rails that are kind of on top. To me, it looks really cool. I, I really liked it. All right. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, I think it was about 23 minutes in. Let's just play here for a second. Pushing them down is tremendously easy. You just press this little button on the side of the headrest to fold that down, and then you just lift this little latch on the side of the seat, and then the entire seat folds down basically flat. Very, very easy to do. And worth noting, it's a 60-40 split back here for folding, as you can see. I mean, the rear seat doesn't just fold as one unit. You could theoretically put someone back here and still fold down the rest of the back seat for extra cargo space. Okay, so I just want to point out a little bit of a difference between the four door and the two door. First of all, on the two door, it is split 50-50, not 60-40. Secondly, this seat just seems to fold straight down, whereas uh, the seat for, on the two door, the, the bottom of the seat flips up, then you take the back of the seat down. So it looks like this. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different, slightly more, um, you know, there's two steps instead of one. Um, to take that, uh, the bottom of the seat up is probably easier to do from the front of the vehicle. And then if you're putting the back of the seat down, that can be done either from the front of the vehicle or from the rear of the vehicle. 
All right. Um, at, uh, let's see, the 25 minute mark, he kind of talks about Let's take a look here. People won't really know that this is a Bronco when they just come up behind it. And it's not like you can put on a tire cover that says Bronco and giant lettering across. The OK, so actually, there is a tire cover um, uh, that you can use that that's a uh, that, that or you can buy as an accessory that's that says Bronco. Uh, and it, it, it accounts for that rear um, camera. So you can do that. However, uh, from what I've read, I am not going to put a tire cover. I mean, I'd love to put a big block M tire cover, for example, but I'm not going to do it because it makes sense to kind of keep the tires in the weather and then rotate them. And I am going to rotate the rear tire, uh, or I'm sorry, the spare tire to the rear, uh, to the rear right. I'm going to move the two rear tires to the front. And then I'm going to take one of the front tires and put them in 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 the uh, in the rear. So uh, so that'll presumably be um, let's see if I'm going. Uh, I, I think it's the front left tire. I'm going to put it in in the uh, in the rear. And I'm going to go ahead and do that rotation. I'm expecting to get 20% more mileage because it'll be five tires uh, versus four, and the wear will be more even that way. So if you're thinking of doing a tire cover. Um, just based on my research, that's, that's what I am going to do. Um, all right. Uh, at the 20, you know, a few seconds after this, he, he starts to kind of, let's see if I can find it here, uh, 25, 30 or so. Let's see. All right. So he talks about the, than the one in the Wrangler and especially an unusual turn signal design, kind of strange, not just like a circle or. Okay. So, uh, he talks about this being unusual. Other people notice the Easter egg that it's it's kind of like a bee of a Bronco. So kind of was hoping that Doug might notice that because um, I've seen it in other videos. I think it's really cool. Uh, those those rear turn signals um, actually form kind of a bee. You, you can kind of see it right there. Um, all right, a couple other things. So uh, I'm going to skip ahead to 30. Let's go a couple seconds before this. He starts talking about these um, little straps here. Let me kind of see. Of Bronco on either side, sort of flanking it, which looks cool. And you have these circular headlights, which is also an old school feature. Okay, actually two things he talks about in, uh, back to back. First of all, the circular headlights. When you go inside and you see this little bar, when you go inside the vehicle and you have the on off button to start up the vehicle, it looks it looks like that. It has that little bar and the button you actually press. So that, so to me, that's really cool. He likes, he likes it on the outside. Um, uh, little Easter egg, if you will. Notice it on the inside as well. You will notice it on the inside as well. I love how all of that stuff looks in the front. It really gives it a very distinctive front image as opposed to the back, which, like I said, is a little bit more generic. You won't say generic about the front. One other interesting front item is these little like panels on the front fenders with a little window in them. They're very strange. What they're for is you're supposed to tie like a cord or a wire from those all the way up to the roof racks. And then if you're off-roading through the jungle, that wire will kind of push tree branches out of the way so it doesn't break your windshield. <laughs> Nobody will ever use this feature. It's ridiculous. It's not... All right, so here's where I disagree. Um, this is another point of disagreement. This uh, vehicle, uh, and I'll, I'll post a picture uh, in this video as well, this vehicle can hold, uh, even the two-door version can hold a canoe on top. And immediately when I talked to my friend Paul and I kind of showed him that, he's like, oh, wow, we can, we can tie the canoe, we can tie the canoe to the front. And he was actually thinking also to the steel wheel on the back. So. Um, a really cool opportunity to do that. And um, to me, I'm getting the base Bronco, the idea of a canoe on top as sort of a hat for, for the vehicle um, as an alternative to the relatively expensive, for me, $7,300 uh, uh, cost to upgrade to the Sasquatch. Um, literally getting that canoe, getting you know the roof rack uh, piece for the canoe and then tying it down on the front 
I bet I will get just as much or more attention uh, than, than the Sasquatch uh, people will <laughs> uh, uh, just having the canoe on top of the Bronco. It just looks like the old school Bronco, uh, which is what I was uh, uh, trying to get out of this. So here's what I'm talking about. I found the picture that I, I thought was awesome. You see the Bronco uh, with the green, what I call hat, that canoe upside down. I'm gonna go over to Paul's, kind of borrow his canoe and we're gonna put it on upside down with those tie straps to the front. I also really like the front because it, it kind of helps you figure out exactly where the end of the Bronco is because that hood is so up high. Uh, so I, th I think it's useful from that standpoint as well. So he talks about the engine here. Let's kind of take a look. Which is pretty quick and a lot faster than a Jeep Wrangler if you're interested in speed from your Bronco. And finally, since I'm talking powertrain, I wanna move on to the very last item here, and that would be the transmission, the manual transmission. Now, I'm saving this for last because virtually nobody is really ordering these with manual transmissions. I don't think this is gonna be relevant for most people. I'm hearing like 5% of new Broncos are being sold with three pedals, but it's worth Okay, so uh, so I believe we'll see we'll see what the numbers turn out uh, to be, but I believe it's going to be uh, well higher. It, it's going to be higher than five percent. I'm going to say um, four times that amount. I'm going to say twenty percent of Broncos will have four cylinder. Uh, I'm sorry, will have a manual transmission, and um, to me, the the manual transmission. Uh, makes a lot of sense on the Bronco. I, I think when people see it, when people see people driving the manual transmission, they're just going to think about that, that old version of the, of the Bronco. Uh, and again, you know, sort of comparing it with the Sasquatch package, to me, I'd rather have a manual transmission in the standard uh, configuration rather than a Sasquatch uh, with, with the automatic. All right. So here's that part about the crawler gear. To get into reverse. I really don't want you to accidentally activate the crawler gear because it truly is a crawler gear. You can see like 12 miles an hour is about 4,000 RPM. You really only want to use this feature if you're in a situation where you need a lot of power at low speeds. Like if you're... All right. It does appear as if he actually went 12 miles per hour. Uh, with the crawler gear. My understanding is that uh, actually, um, uh, I I've only gone up to three miles per hour with it. I'll, I'll just put it that way. Uh, the crawler gear generates a lot of torque. Um, uh, I have done it in both two wheel drive and four wheel drive, uh, but I do not feel comfortable going over three miles per hour uh, with it. Um, in either the two H or four H configuration, uh, or uh, gear, you are able to go, and this is on the base model, you are able to kind of hold it at three miles per hour, the, the, the vehicle just goes at three miles per hour uh, without pressing any pedals. If you put it in 4L, it will go one mile an hour uh, without pressing any pedals. Reading up on this a little bit, uh, we really should limit our use of the crawler gear, and that's very difficult because, <laughs> because it's really tempting. It, it's just such a cool uh, uh, kind of thing kind of thing to do. So, um, all right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit more. Let's go to the 35 minute mark here. You really feel tough in the new Bronco uh, in a way that you don't really in the Wrangler. Not to say that the Wrangler isn't tough, but it's not quite the same for sure. Next up, and probably the most surprising thing, this engine is great. When Ford announced they were all right. Well, he called the engine great, uh, which is which is awesome. I know TFL did a, a review. Tommy at TFL preferred the uh, Jeep engine, so um, you know definitely drive it, definitely check it out. I thought you know I'm coming from a Mustang. I had a V6 Mustang manual transmission. Um, this engine took a little getting used to, and the transmission as well. Uh, Doug liked the transmission uh, uh, as well as the engine. He he thought they uh, verbally at least he he thought that they were great. Um, uh, uh, he, he thought the engine itself was one of his favorite engines, et cetera. Uh, and for a larger vehicle, because this is the four-door, I have the two-door, he thought it was adequate. So all of those things, uh, you know, please listen in on, on what he said. But then we get to uh, the score, the Doug score. And maybe, maybe this is a frequent uh, 
question with him. Let's see if I can get to it. Uh, I think right about here, right? So here's the Doug score. Let's take a look. <laughs> Starting with the weekend category. Okay, so he's going through all the categories. So I, I'm going to kind of skip ahead to, uh, I think it was 39. All right, here's the overall score, but how did he get there? Let me just pause it here. Okay, so uh, here's his Doug score. You heard what he said about the uh, the vehicle. He said it was adequate uh, acceleration, or I mean, please listen in. I'm I'm telling you, but but please uh, uh, listen in. Um, but he only gave it a one. So you know, it's it's one of these things where um, the uh, the criteria versus the commentary just don't match up uh, with respect to this. So if you're used to Doug, um, he's he's a hard grader. Uh, but it is interesting that he only gave it a one after just nothing but glowing reviews about both the engine and the transmission and saying that that it was adequate uh, or, you know, uh, more than adequate for um, for most people. He did also kind of talk about uh, wind noise, uh, et cetera. You know, um, yes, it, it uh, we have a um, MKC in the household. It is much quieter. It's it's uh, on the, on the highway. Um, yeah, Doug mentioned that uh, as a daily driver, the Bronco would be just fine. And he just kind of talked about, uh, I think he referred to them as uh, rich or wealthy people. You know, they may be reserving one of these and their expectations may, may not be met. So what I would say is to me, it's, it's a fun vehicle that I can take the top off of, even with the roof rack, I can take the top off of, if I know it's going to be a sunny day, and drive um, 20, 30 miles, no problem uh, into, uh, into work. And that shouldn't be an issue at all. And I can store the panels in the trunk. I can put them right back on. Um, it is slightly, I mean, not slightly, it's, it's a, uh, a couple minute job versus a few seconds uh, on the Mustang convertible that I had. But that alone is makes it worth it uh, in terms of all of the um, quote unquote wind noise when you have the top uh, on. So if you don't ever take the top off, I would say um, the comfort is, is uh, yeah, suspect. To, you, know, you, may, you may say the comfort or quality is suspect, but the whole point of the thing is to take the top off. So take the top off and, and uh, enjoy it in a way that you cannot enjoy a, a conventional vehicle. Uh, I hope uh, this was value added for you. I just wanted to kind of point out a couple things. I also want to say that Doug's videos are excellent, so please do uh, listen to this from beginning to end. And if you don't have enough time, listen to Doug on hyperspeed um, and uh, kind of go through, have him go through the whole thing. There are so many things that he said that were positive. You know, I, I feel like I might have <laughs> talked about a few negative things, but but uh, uh, hopefully this is sort of enhancing, sort of a rebuttal to some of the points that he had and uh, in some of the things that perhaps he missed that uh, I could fill in with. Uh, hopefully this is value added to you. Thank you.